Today's demonstration is going to be how to forge a snowflake. I first read about this in the December 2009 uh, IBA newsletter, Indiana Black Association newsletter. A gentleman by the name of Michael Wolowski uh, did a real nice write up on how to make these out of three quarter inch square bar. So if you look at, at the IBA website, uh, they list, have all the newsletters available there. Go to the December 2009, and there's a real nice handwritten tutorial on how to make these. Uh, the only difference between Michael's way of doing it and mine is he has in there about taking saw blades and uh, putting them in place to keep from closing things up. Uh, personally, I found that to be a little bit uh, more aggravating than it was worth. So I don't do that, and then I open them up with uh, pliers. I don't use uh, I don't use anything on the small openings, the pliers, and uh, maybe a slitting chisel if I have to. But uh, I find the pliers to be a lot easier to open it up. So that's going to be today's demonstration. Uh, when we're done, this is the one we made, by the way, thanks to modern technology. But we drill a hole right up here in the end of it and you can put a piece of fishing twine in it and when you hang it with the fishing twine you can't hardly even tell what it's hanging by so they make a real nice christmas ornament so that will be today's demonstration thanks for watching so we need a piece of three quarter square stock uh, three inches long and it just so happens if you look from the edge of the blade to the end of the table It's three inches So we're not going to bother putting our we usually Have this stop That we see clamp on here at whatever length we need but since we need three inches and three inches is right here We're not going to mess with setting up the stop So we just bring it over here to the edge About three inches we're not going to get real wild we're just going to eyeball it and make sure it's fairly square. And then we cut it. And there's our three inch piece. So what we have now is we have our three quarter inch square mild steel stock cut three inches so the next step is we have to divide this into three even parts which would be a quarter inch each and cut it an inch and three quarter down I've made a jig for this to cut these basically what you do is you make your first cut inch and three quarter and then you roll it over 180 degrees and you make your second cut and that'll divide it into your three equal pieces one word about cutting when you cut with a bandsaw number one you always want to use a push stick don't use your fingers if something slips it'll cut through you pretty quick so you want to use a push stick Second thing you want to remember is you don't want to push real hard. Okay, you just want to push enough to feed it in. If you push it hard, two things are going to happen. Your cut's going to go crooked, and you're going to uh, either break the blade or kink it. Those blades are, are about seven, eight dollars a piece. So you, you know you really don't want to tear up those blades. So just feed it in there slow. Don't get in any hurry. So here we go. So there's our first long cut. So what we want to do now is we want to turn it 180 degrees, put it back in there and make the second inch and three quarter cut.
and there we have our first two long cuts. Now what we're going to do, we're going to turn it 90 degrees, then we're going to turn it this way 180 degrees. So that the long cuts are opposite to each other in both planes. So, start with the first cut. So that's our first cut in that plane. Now we're just going to roll it over 180 degrees. Put it back in. Make sure it's seated. Make our second cut in that point. Rambunctious, didn't we? That's what happens when you push a little too hard. Back that up. So that's what happens when you get to pushing a little too hard. Okay. So we have all four cuts. And if you notice, the cuts overlap about a quarter of an inch. That's because this is an inch and three quarter and this is an inch and three quarter. It's a three inch piece. So they overlap a quarter of an inch. We're going to cool this down and we're going to come back and we're going to cut the shortcuts. So we have our two cuts, inch and three quarter cuts in this plane and we have our two inch and three quarter cuts in this plane. And as I said, if you look at them, you can see they overlap by about a quarter of an inch more or less. So the next step is we have to make two three-quarter cuts here just like we did here evenly spaced and then we want to turn it 180 degrees and 90 and make two more three-quarter inch cuts here just like before three even pieces quarter inch each roughly so to do this we want to take this little piece that's chained on to the jig because I have worked with me before and if that wasn't chained on there I'd have lost that a long time ago. So set that there. We're going to cut three quarters of an inch. Until it bottoms out. Once it bottoms out we're going to roll it over now 180 degrees and we're going to cut the other three quarter inch cut. So we have our first two three-quarter inch cuts. So now we're going to take that, turn it 90 and 180. We're going to make our third three-quarter inch cut. So there we have our eight cuts. Two here, two here two here and two here and there's our blank we're divided into nine pieces on each end so that's what your blank should look like so here's our blank it's ready to open up so the tools we're going to use is we're going to use a slitting chisel to open the long cuts up and pull them sideways we're going to use a pair of combination vinos and flat tongs to hold it. We're going to use these vice grips, which the teeth have been ground off of them, to grab a hold of these ears when it's time to open them up and pull them open. Okay, and then of course the other tool is a ball peen hammer. So that's the tools we're going to use to do this with. 
So we're going to put it in the forge and we're going to get it started. So we bring this up and we come about a quarter inch up from where our slot's in and clamp it in the vise. Take our slitting chisel. That one we pull it sideways. Now we want to drive those over a little bit so we can get our slitting chisel in there again. We got one that kind of followed, we didn't want it to. Not a big problem. Now we've got them started. Now that I've got it started, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reheat them before I finish bending. No use working the cold. Bring it back up. Like I said we're going to put it about a quarter inch below where it'll stop. Now we're going to grab that, we're going to pull, we're going to get another bite on it, we're going to pull again. Pull it down straight. Same over here. We're going to grab it, pull down, grab it again, pull down, and we want them to be reasonably straight toward each other. Just like that. of an inch below the, not three quarters, about a quarter of an inch below, then you open it up. Got that one started. open. Let's take a little time here to get them a little straighter. That was hot. Okay, so we've got it opened up. Got it reasonably straight. Now we're going to take it, we're going to start opening up the shortcuts. Now we're going to take our chisel, 
down in there. About a 45 degree angle. If you work both sides even, the machine of grease ends up pretty even when you're done. All you gotta do is come up here, straighten your ears out a little bit, get them where you want. That's one. Five more to go. Done. Let's 
See how it's coming along? Everything's relatively straight. shots. I just love that glowing snowflake. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take it, we're going to let it cool, and we're going to put it in the tumbler. We're going to tumble it for about 15-20 minutes, get all the scale off of it, and then we're going to drill it and get it ready to hang. This is a shot of the inside of the tumbler. As you can see, it's full of just nuts and bolts and bits and pieces of stuff. Don't know any other way to put it. Here's our, our snowflake. Finished and tumbled. So we're going to drill a hole in that now and we're going to get ready to hang it. This is the finished snowflake. Just kind of hangs in the air. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got some good use out of it. Thanks for watching.